Chapter 5, Lecture 1, the Work and Energy of Moving Fluids. So in this lecture series, uh, I think there's four lectures in this series, we're going to uh, develop a couple of key equations. One is Euler's equation, uh, and the second one is Bernoulli equations. And from those equations, we'll be able to uh, solve many types of problems you see in, in fluids. So these equations really are developed from Newton's laws of motion. Uh, but instead of using Newton's laws of motion, which work well for uh, point particles or mass, you know, that's a solid object. In the case of fluids, it's easier to take Newton's laws of motion and rewrite them uh, in terms that are built for fluids. Uh, in the latter part of the lectures, we'll, we'll show how to construct the energy grade line and hydraulic grade line for a fluid system. This is akin to uh, solving uh, for the conservation of energy kind of problems that you did back in, in the, your physics classes. And finally, we'll develop the energy equation and show how pro solve problems that include pumps, turbines, and friction losses. So for the first equation, let's take a look at what's known as Euler equations of motion. These equations are developed from Newton's uh, second law. So what we're going to look at, we're going to look at a, what's known as a streamline. So this was a a path that the fluid follows in uh, in a system. So here you have, uh, uh, since this, is, this problem is inherently uh, two-dimensional, we're going to have acceleration along uh, the, in this direction, along the, what's called the S direction, and we'll have acceleration toward the, the center uh, that's in the, what's called the N direction. So instead of using uh, X and Y, or, you know, X and Z, we're going to use the symbols S and N because that's what our, our textbook uses. So here, as this, as this fluid particle flows along the streamline, it's going to change not only elevation, it can change, uh, which affects the, the gravitational force. It's drawn toward the center so that you have the centripetal force. And then you have the force that's pushing it along the, uh, the S direction. So here, you know, if you look at forces in the S direction and forces in the N direction, you essentially can write two equations. And again, the book goes through this uh, and develops these equations, but, but honestly, you, you don't gain a whole lot from uh, looking at the derivations. Uh, you know, you'll learn to use these equations as you apply, apply them in specific problems. So here, this first term, uh, rho here is the density. Uh, this is the density term, this is the velocity term, and this is the uh, gravitational force term. Uh, so here, as it flows along, as this is for the s-direction equations. Uh, now, the n-direction, again, you have this force that's drawn toward the center. So here, this is your old uh, v squared over r. So remember back when you did centripetal force, uh, the, the centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. Uh, well, here, you know, you don't have an individual mass. you got you got a, a, a density, so it's density V squared over R. And these are the forces uh, basically toward the center is the uh, how the, the pressure changes toward the center and how the gravitational force changes as you move toward the end direction. So that's basically the terms in these equations. So uh, rho is density, V is velocity, uh, G is the separation to gravity. Uh, what else terms do you have here? Uh, R is the, is the radius, uh, you know, this is kind of like a circular path, and so you're going to have a radius toward the center. That's that's the R, R term. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next next lecture uh, slide. So let's take a look at the at this equation, the, the uh, Euler equation for a simple case of uh, steady flow in an ideal fluid. So shown in the diagram is a straight uh, conduit, so it's a pipe. Uh, basically running from left to right, and you got a velocity flow V moving through the pipe. Uh, so we're going to look at an individual particle uh, streams along, say, the direction here where the author shows, going from from A to B. Uh, so the pressure at A is known as, as P of A. We want to determine the pressure at B. Uh, so this is also this flowing at constant velocity, right? So if you look at Euler's equation here, you can basically integrate this equation from A to B. That's what the author shows down here. He's pulled out the, the density term out of each term here. But uh, So if you integrate this term here from A to B, you integrate the, the velocity here from, uh, from A to B, uh, and one of the stipulations is the, it's, 
it's a steady flow, right? So it's the same velocity here, same velocity there. This term is effectively zero. Uh, you're not changing elevation, so this term is that term is zero. Uh, so the only term left is this first term. Uh, so if you integrate this term, it's it's basically the integral of, of dx. Uh, you know, from some initial x value to some final x value. Uh, so that's p uh, integrated from p a to p b. So basically, you, you get this term here. Uh, so if you so solve this, you get basically that the pressure at B is equal to the pressure at A, which you would expect if it's the same velocity, right? Same velocities, same elevation, so therefore the pressure is going to be the same. No biggie. Now let's look at it uh, from going from A to C. Same equation. Uh, you're going to integrate from, from here to there, but this is in the N direction now, right? Uh, so you have to use the other equation. Uh, this equation here, but again, if you if you integrate from a to b, uh, what you end up getting is this equation here, uh, minus dp minus rho g dz uh, is equal to zero because again, it's uh, uh, this term here is going is um, is going to be zero um, because r r here is going to be infinity, right? So because this is not a curved path, it's a straight straight path from here to there. There is no R, it's infinity. So this term goes away as R goes to infinity. So you're left with this final equation here. Now if you integrate from A to C, uh, what you end up getting is uh, just the PC plus PA minus rho G, uh, and this term is simply the height difference. So if you solve this, what you end up getting is that the pressure at C is equal to the pressure at A plus rho GH. Uh, so, you know, it's put, and you've seen this before if you, if you go back to uh, the first chapter, if, if you remember back from your physics textbooks, this was the equation that uh, was often given. The change in pressure equals the, the density times G times the change in height. If you go from uh, uh, one vertical position to another vertical position inside of a fluid. All right, now let's look at what, uh, what's known as the Bernoulli equation, which is simply taking the order equations and, and simply integrating them for a general kind of case. So here we look at a case where we have a flow along uh, this streamline here uh, from point one to point two, and the pressure is different, right, because you're changing elevation here now. So the pressure is different, the velocity could be different, and the elevation changes. So if you integrate, this equation along the streamline, you get this term here. Uh, and this has to be equal to a constant. So each of these terms, you know, uh, and this equation is used a lot in in uh, in this particular chapter and the next several chapters, actually. This is akin to conservation of energy, the conservation of energy equation, back when you studied uh, uh, physics. So you first started off with physics and you looked at kinematics, uh, then you started looking at uh, Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA. And then you developed the, the concept of conservation of energy. And then later on, conservation of momentum. And so that's exactly what we're doing it here in fluids. This is our conservation of energy equation. So now we have two basic equations. We have conservation of momentum from, from the previous chapter four. And now in chapter five, we've introduced conservation of energy. So what this says is that this equation has to stay constant from one point to another point inside of a fluid. So in particular, if we look at point one and point two, we can basically write uh, the energy at point one has to equal the energy at point two. So this side of the equation has to be equal to that side of the equation. Uh, but again, this equation is only good for steady flow, uh, for an ideal fluid, and along the same streamline. So you kind of have to... Um, be careful when to apply it. Uh, of course, in this chapter, we're going to look at a lot of different examples where uh, it's applicable, and you'll sort of get the idea of when and where you, you can apply this equation. But it's very useful. So here's some kind of situations where the Bernoulli equation does not apply. Uh, so if you have, like, for example, uh, rotational eddies, you know, like uh, obstruction and the water comes near it and it starts doing uh, little eddy currents, you, you don't want to apply Bernoulli's equation there. If you have a, a viscous friction, you know, where the friction is changing a lot, 
you know, near the surface of a pipe, you know, along here, you wouldn't want to apply it there. Uh, it's okay in the center of the pipe, but not, not on the edges. If you add heat to, to a pipe, you know, so if you're trying to apply Bernoulli's equations between B and C, you wouldn't want to do that because you're adding heat here to it. So you're adding energy. Uh, if you have an, um, a, a propeller, you know, here and, and you're, you're, you're adding energy to between D and E, again, you wouldn't want to apply it because, again, you're adding energy. And Bernoulli's equation is essentially a concentration of energy. Um, so you're going to change the energy you're added to the system, right? If you have a situation where the fluid's separating, so the fluid comes along here and uh, part of it goes this way and part of it goes that way, uh, you wouldn't want to apply Bernoulli's equation there either. So let's look at some cases where you can apply Bernoulli's equation. So let's take a, a case where you have a, a, a flow from a reservoir. So you have an opening uh, below a reservoir uh, here at B, and at A, it's on the surface. So here we want to write down Bernoulli's equations for point A. So we write each term. Uh, you got three terms. You got each term, the pressure at A over the density at A, uh, plus uh, velocity squared at A over 2G plus VA. So here, now one one special thing here, when you when uh, when you for this term here and this term, you have to these have to be measured from the same point. It doesn't matter where you measure it from, but it has to be measured from the same same point. Uh, just like uh, the conservation of energy for the uh, uh, you know the uh, delta PE equals uh, you know, uh, GH G the G and H term, right? Uh, MGH, right? So you have to the H has to be measured from the same reference point. So here, uh, you know, it's the easiest the easiest point to choose is right at at B. Because what does that do for you? Then that makes this Z B term zero. Uh, you can choose it where you want. If you choose it down here, uh, Z B won't be zero. It'll be whatever the height is from here to there. Uh, you get to it'll all come out in the in the end because uh, you know as long as you measure from the same reference point. So let's measure from B. So here the 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 height at A Z A is going to just be H. Uh, that's kind of nice. Now, the, what's the pressure at A? Well, it's going to have some pressure, but the point is that uh, the pressure at B is so, going to be so much greater than the pressure of A that, that, that you know, practically the pressure at A is going to be zero. Same thing with the velocity. I think, is there going to be some velocity here? Yes, but it's, it's, it's minuscule compared to the velocity of the water coming out. So we'll set that to zero. So this side of the equation, only, all, the only time you get is H. Uh, now here at B... Let's look at the other side here. At B, uh, you know, it's basically at, it's atmospheric because we're, you know we're not going to measure the pressure here, for example. We're measuring the pressure here where it comes out, and this is the same as A. It's basically at atmospheric pressure coming out. Uh, so this term is zero. Now the velocity is not going to be zero because it's going to come out with some speed, and then the Z term is zero because again we're measuring things from this from this reference point at B. So the only terms we're left with is H and this term here, and you can solve for the loss of velocity of B. It's the square root of two G H. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. It's also if if you look at the the case where let me change the color here, um, if I can, uh, let's change to a pencil. If you look at a case where uh, you have a a hill, right, and you uh, take a ball of mass M, and let's say this height here is H, right? From here, the top of the hill to the bottom of the of reference line here. Um, so you, you drop this ball. How fast does it hit hit the bottom? You know, what's the speed right before it hits? Well, again, we use conservation energy. So up here, it's all uh, potential, mgh, right? And at the bottom, it's all kinetic. So it's one half. I can write my pencil here. Mv squared, right? So the m's cancel, right? And if you solve this for v, what do you get? The square root of 2gh. Exactly the same as this term here, right? Which is kind of amazing if you think about it, right? You get exactly the same term, um, same equation uh, for a similar kind of problem. 
Okay, another example is we have a flow around a curve boundary. So this is a case where, you know, the water's coming along fine, and then you have a, like a sandbar or something like that. And uh, I don't know if any of you have been on a river a lot, but what you'll see is you'll see the, the water like diverts around the sandbar. And you end up here is an area where it's basically no flow. It's like stagnation. You can even see leaves and dirt and stuff like that form right around me here. Um, so they call it B here as a stagnation point. Uh, and the velocity basically becomes zero at, at B. Uh, and then slowly it'll move off to the side and then start flowing around this way. So let's see if we can find some uh, applied Bernoulli's equation to this point from A to B. So again, we write down the relevant equations here. Uh, and again, we're, this is at the same elevation, so ZA and ZB are going to be the same, right? They're at the same uh, elevation. Um, the velocity, the um, um, velocity at B, we already talked about, is zero, so that term's zero. Uh, so, so here's what you're left with is this equation here. Um, and if you solve, if you solve this for uh, PB, since you multiply through by gamma uh, and move this term to the other side, you get the pressure at B is equal to the pressure at A plus uh, density V squared A over two. And so these are known by uh, certain terms. The pressure at B is what's called the stagnation pressure. The pressure at A is what's called the static pressure. And this term here is what's known as the dynamic pressure. It's got units of pressure if you multiply this out. So pressure plus equals pressure plus pressure, right? Um, all right. Okay, how about an open channel? How, you know, one thing, one method to determine the velocity of a moving fluid that is an open channel, uh, such as a river, is simply take a bent tube and put it in, in the river, and it's open at uh, at uh, uh, this end here, right? And and even this end. Uh, so this is a, basically just a, a curved piece of glass. If you put it inside the river, uh, as the river flows, the velocity will push the water up inside the pipe to a certain height. Let's call it H. So let's take a look at, at uh, applying Bernoulli's equations between A and B, uh, you know, uh, where B is, is um, um, the point here. So here... At A, you got the, the pressure at A uh, plus V squared A over 2G plus Z of A, right? Well, this point and this point are at the same elevation, so the ZA and ZB are going to be can canceling. Uh, at B here, you know, it's going to be, uh, the velocity is going to be zero because it's going to, it's, it's going to hit here and be zero. And then you have this uh, uh, pressure term is simply the density times the uh, the change in height, right? H plus D plus H. That's going to be the pressure here. Um, so gamma times D plus H, that's the pressure. Uh, divide by gamma. So the gammas cancel. And on this side, the left side, you get uh, the pressure is going to be gamma times times D. Uh, remember what gamma is. Gamma is the density times, uh, times G. Um, so the gammas cancel. Gammas cancel. Uh, so I can cancel those out here. Cancel out the gammas here. Gamma there cancels. Cancel this gamma. Cancel that gamma. And solve this for V of, v of A, and you get uh, square root of 2 GH. So what do you do for a, a, a closed conduit? You know, so this is like inside of a pipe. Well, in that case, you have uh, uh, two uh, pilot tube tubes. Uh, uh, so here you use what's called a, a piezometer and, and, a, and a pitot tube uh, to determine the velocity. So you have uh, a pipe here, a straight pipe here, and you have your curved pipe here. Uh, so the only difference is, you know, again, you get uh, you got two pipes to worry about. So the pressure at A here is given by D plus H times gamma. Um, the pressure at B um, is going to be a little bit higher because the energy is going to be higher here, right? So it's going to flow up, the water's going to flow up higher in the curved tube than it does in the straight tube. Let's say it's about an amount uh, L. 
Um, so again, you end up canceling Z of A, Z of B. They they're the same, so it cancels. The velocity at B is zero. This is again one of those stagnation kind of points, right? Uh, so you solve this equation for V of A, and you get the square root of 2G times L for a flow in a closed conduit. Uh, so rather than use two tubes, you can use a, a, a they make this single tube that's called a, a pedostatic tube. It's basically a tube within a tube. Um, so you got the curve tube, and then you have this other tube that's inside of it. Uh, so this this takes the place of having two tubes. And so if you write the equations here uh, and solve, you get the velocity of A is given by this term here. It's just the difference in pressures, P at E minus P at C. Uh, two over gamma, take square root, that's the velocity. So another commonly used uh, device is known as a, a venturi meter. Um, and this is honestly one of the more commonly used devices to measure velocity in a pipe. Basically, this consists of a reducer, which is a restriction, you know, narrowing down of a of the pipe, uh, followed by uh, to a to a throat, which is the narrowest point, and then a gradual transition back to the the uh, original pipe. So as the water comes in and flows into the reducer, it starts. Uh, the flow accelerates because it starts speeding up. Um, this causes a higher velocity and a lower pressure to be developed at the throat. So if you write Bernoulli's equations for point one and point two, uh, you end up getting this equation here. So the Z terms cancel because it's, we're looking at a streamline along the same elevation point. So this Z1 equals Z2, those cancel. So you get this equation. Now, the other thing you can do is that uh, you can look at the equation from equation uh, from chapter four, the, the continuity equation, and write the continuity equation here. So here, let's make our control volume this part shaded in red. Uh, this term is going to to, uh, to be zero because um, in, inside the control volume we're not we're not changing the mass, right? So this first term, remember, is uh, the mass term that's, uh, if we're creating mass inside of a control volume, we have to worry about this term. Well, here this term is zero. So here we only have, we got flow in, flow in and flow out. That's the second term. So basically it's V1, which is the velocity here, times the area of this pipe here, which is uh, pi times R squared. Now our book leaves this in terms of diameter. So instead of being R squared, it's the diameter over 2 squared. So that's where you get D1 squared over 4. Uh, that's the flow coming into the pipe. And then the flow going out of the pipe is, is given by the similar kind of term. Remember, the minus is and positive comes from the fact that here the area is out and the flow is in. So you get the, the, the dot product that's going to be negative here. And on this case, the, the velocity is this way, the area is that way. So you end up with a positive here. So if you take uh, this equation and the equation from the previous uh, slide for the energy equation, and you combine those two equations and solve for V1, you end up getting this equation here. Uh, so this is this uh, things you know. Uh, difference in pressure, density, uh, the, rate, the diameter of the pipe, very easy to calculate. 